We want to get back to nature. We want to be surrounded by beauty. And so what humans don't appreciate is the fact that here in the United States, there's no such thing as a hazard-free <laughs> environment. If you live on the coast, especially here in the southeast, you'd better become knowledgeable and learn about hurricanes and how often hurricanes attack and can damage and destroy areas, as we saw with Katrina in 2005. People in New Orleans need to understand, for example, that New Orleans was wiped out by hurricanes in the past. This isn't, Katrina wasn't the first. And so humans have this short-term memory, unfortunately. But if you study hazards and the environment like I do, you know the history of hazards. Here in Great Smoky Mountains, we have, it's extremely beautiful. We have Gatlinburg, we have towns, and we have Cherokee. We have all these beautiful towns and villages, and resorts. And, and I take my family there all the time. Dollywood, oh my gosh. You know, my kids, we go to Dollywood all the time. You know, it's, it's just, it's... Gatlinburg and Pigeon Forge to me are, are some of the jewels of, of Tennessee and the southeast in general. And uh, who doesn't want to go there? You're, you're surrounded by nature and you're surrounded, so you're, and you're in the mountains, you know. And, and so you go to Ober Gatlinburg, you take the, you know, the lifts up and enjoy the scenery and, you know, I mean, what's not to like? But at the same time, people need to understand that these are forests that we've built our cabins, our neighborhoods, our businesses, our resorts in areas that are nothing but fuel. It's fuel for fire. What people don't understand and what I try to do, I'm, I'm trying to let them understand that fire is a part of this ecosystem. Yeah, we built our neighborhoods in it, we built our homes and businesses. But as long as there are forests, as long as there are fuels, as long as there's grass and shrubs and beautiful rhododendrons that we go to see on the Little Pigeon River, things like that, you need to understand those are all flammable. What we also need to understand is that they burned in the past, just like those hurricanes that have hit New Orleans in the past. Well, guess what? Wildfires have occurred here in the past and they will continue to happen in the future because that's what these forests do. That's what nature does. To live in these environments, though, we have to alter them, just like what we do in New Orleans. How do we alter it? Well, we build seawalls, you know, protect it so we can build our neighborhoods that are now below sea level. What do we do in the mountains? You know, well, we, we alter it so that we can live there. You know, Unfortunately, when we want to live there, we're building our houses and our cabins and our resorts and businesses out of wood not only are we surrounded by wood and fuels, but we've just created our living environment made out of wood, which is, is fuel. And Mother Nature doesn't care if it's a tree or if it's a cabin, it's going to burn. What do you think, um, I, had a, I had a question on standby and it, and it, just, it just drifted away. Um, <laughs> In this, you will have to defend yourself a little bit here, but mm -hmm. if somebody's watching this interview and they're like, yeah, he's just an alarmist, mm -hmm. you know? We, it, mankind has dominion over Mother Nature and we, mm -hmm. we can take care of these things. I mean, what would you say to somebody who's like, ah. Well, I've already been called an alarmist and a catastrophist, and, and, you know, but at the same time, I'm erring on the side of caution. Plus, I have history on my side. You know, there's that famous old saying, you know, those who don't remember history or doomed to repeat it. And so guess what? I study the history of the environment, just like others study the history of, of humans. You know, that's why we take history courses at, in high school and at, at a university, to learn how humans got to be who we are today. I do the same thing with the environment. I study the environment. I learn about the history of the environment. And those of us that understand the history of the environment know that these, that what are called disturbances, you know, it doesn't matter if it's forest fires, wind storms, tornadoes, it could be ice storms, whatever. All of these things affect forests. They've occurred often in the past and they're going to occur often in the future. So yes, I have been called an alarmist and bad things have been said about me on social media. But you know, that's what uh, scientists have to deal with sometimes. I'm just, I just want to get the word out. I just want people to understand. You know, I want these communities to, to understand what they're living in and what they're surrounded by. 
knowledge is power. Knowledge is key. If you're aware of the dangers that could happen around you, maybe this will save your, your life or your, the life of your family. So yeah, they want to call me an alarmist. At the same time, I'm just trying to make sure they understand. And education is key here. So I'm trying to help get the word out to those that are living in this environment that they're living in a very fire-prone environment. Very good. I, I, and thank you. You're doing great. I just have a couple more. Um, on a, on a uh, global scale, looking at weather patterns and changes, um, do, you, do you feel, maybe this is just impossible to predict, but do you think we're, we're entering in a, a season where we may see decades of you know, below average rainfall, or is yeah. it just hard to say? Well, oh gosh, if I could, you know, people have asked me, you know, well, well what's going to be the future of, of, of climate? What's going to be the future of wildfires, you know? If I could answer both of those, I would be the world's leading scientist, and I wouldn't be sitting here. I would be somewhere else making millions of dollars, you know. So, but it's, these are valid questions, and people want to know, you know. Um, first off, people need to understand there's a relationship between, between climate and wildfires, as we saw. Drought, you know, uh, over many, many months, or even, you know, we had in two years of drought in 2007, 2008, by the way, which is more severe than the drought that happened and, and contributed to this wildfire. So climate and wildfires are connected, but to be able to predict what's going to be the future is almost impossible. Now, I will say that I am genuinely worried as a scientist that we may have reached a new threshold of fire hazard here in the southeast. As I said before, we had worse, much worse, and longer drought conditions right here in the same exact, if you look at the drought monitor, the maps for 2007 and 2016, they're almost identical. Guess how many wildfires we had here in the southeast? How many new wildfires happened here in the southeast in November of 2007? Zero. And yet it was a more intense drought, longer drought. We had zero. Compare that with 2016. So I'm generally worried that we have now reached a new threshold for fire hazards simply because maybe now Mother Nature is saying, you know what, if a fire does start, I don't care if it's lightning or somebody just throwing matches out or whatever. If a fire does start, I'm going to make sure that fire does something beneficial for these forests. 